see here is I did an interview with the famous Reg from the Not Reg Me channel from YouTube. Today, one day, today. Hey, sir. Yeah. Can I interview you today? You okay. Have a, you have a YouTube channel? I do. Oh, well, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Bring uh, your chair in. Okay, I'll get a chair. <laughs> For some channels, that, 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 they might get that in a day. <laughs> some people might take you know, eight years to get that. <laughs> and then, uh, a lot of my other videos, I, that gave me a lot of subscribers in a short amount of time, uh, which is now kind of giving me kind of a slightly, slightly higher uh, viewership. So it kind of goes in stages where you're down here, then you're here, then you're getting up here. So uh, I think when it does really take off, it's when you're like, Whoa! Yeah, exactly. You don't know when it's going to take yeah. off, it just takes off. Yeah, it takes off.
attention to. But also mainstream news, what they're saying, uh, and then of course there's a lot of uh, really creative, uh, uh, you know, citizen journalists again out there that you know they do a, a much deeper, more in-depth research to a lot of the stuff that I do. But I can also okay, well you can track it back to this, and then of course it's just video footage of. Uh, for main channels, uh, there's so many. It's a three-hour day for me. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So perfect. So then, um, speaking of the world war and the polit political videos and stuff that you do, where do you all get your information for, for it all? Well, same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Same, same, same type of thing. Like, uh, you can find. Uh, and this is something that uh, you know it's kind of weird to do it, where you don't get. You didn't get this a 10, 15, 20 years ago, where something's happening. shares it or you know you know they, they put you onto the right highway entrance and the next thing you know it gets shared all over the place yeah, yeah so it, it can happen and stuff like that but the thing is is uh, like I like I like I said is that people can interact with it so they can also give you a lot of information. Uh, for example one thing I do uh, one of one of the parts of my channel that's the biggest mm -hmm. is it is the geopolitical updates which I call my World War Three yeah, updates. The World War III. And that's the one that I
probably won't realize it. World War One was probably about ten years before he saw the ship return. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and he took a bunch of farm boys. Said, "You're going to be gone for about a week, okay. and we're going to throw you through some, get you to dig some trenches, and uh, you're going to shoot at the uh, farm boys over there." And four years later, of hell, they realized that was a bad idea. Yeah. But World War One was different in the sense of where it was fought. Uh, most wars in history were not fought amongst the general public. They weren't fought in downtown cities. They yeah. weren't fought in the total war. But after World War I, total war, uh, something I've referred to in some of my other videos, was that it changed when uh, the Zeppelin bomber pilots, so to speak, of the day viewed the factory worker as a part of the war. They viewed the little Timmy running with the errands and messages for the generals yeah. here and there as a part of the war. The ladies have so many uniforms, people that work and then total war is now what we have now. Okay. But what also is World War II was kind of fought, basically World War II pretty much started when World War I ended. Now, World War III pretty much started when World War II ended. So it's kind of an ongoing thing, but it goes into typically three phases. First, you have your currency wars. Then you have your trade war, which is what we have with Russia right now, where we have sanctions going on. And these sanctions basically, uh, you know, debilitate are designed to debilitate economies. And once economies tank, the third phase, when everything, when all else fails, the bankers take you over. But it all does kind of, again, the banking system, the media system, uh, and the, uh, the political system, it, it's basically an extreme form of fascism. What Mussolini said during World War II, when you have the merger of state and government, you have fascism. Uh, and that's basically, today they call it globalism, but it's the same thing. It's, it's an extreme fascism. And when it starts to fail, they, they don't know what to do. Now, right now, with Russia, again, this propaganda machine versus that propaganda machine. Now, a lot of it has to do with the bank system. Well, a lot of people don't also understand that. What we're really talking about is empire. Uh, World War II, a lot of people thought was fought, uh, you know, uh, as, as German supremacy, but it really wasn't. Hitler was more of a... Empire free. Uh, the same way uh, after World War II, uh, where you had uh, Stalin, which was the new Hitler. He was actually, they put Hitler looked like a rookie. He killed millions and millions and millions of people. Uh, but the thing is, is, he was another empire. And then, of course, uh, you can go back to the Hundred Years' War. And again, it was the Franco Empire versus the Anglo Empire. Now, today, what you have. Um, you know, and in World War II, you would have had the uh, Austrian Empire, the German Empire, VS, okay, yes. you know, uh, what we have known now as the Anglo American banking system, which is a new empire. So, right now, we have the world is basically divided into two gigantic empires it's the Anglo American Empire, which is basically Europe, North America, and, and the like, and then the rest of the world, uh, including Africa, uh, all of South America, pretty much, all of, pretty much all of Asia. Um, which is the other side of the empire known as the Eurasian Pacific Empire. And right now China is the kind of economic powerhouse where they want to control the world economically, fight the war on the economic front versus the negative the shooting war. Where the Russians, they're not as high in the empire, but they've got the muscle. So this is why Russia and China are joined up together. Russia is the muscle, uh, China is the money. And their competition, uh, getting most third world countries to, to join up with them economically, is basically competition for the Anglo-American Empire, which is basically the United States, Europe, uh, and Anglo-American Empire means basically um, uh, what it, co it comes back to a handful of families. You have about the 13 main like, big families in Europe yeah. that go, these go back hundreds of years that are basically uh, they're banking carballs and stuff like that. But there's also you have like a committee of 300 the Anglo-American Century, the of Rome, all these all these big kind of empireistic kind of ideologies which have different agendas uh, uh, you know, throughout it, yeah. but at the end, they, they still work together. So what I say is there's that one big bloody chair at the top that these, uh, you might call them for what they are, lunatic psychopaths. They're basically, these people, most people have fallen asleep at the wheel, have fallen asleep on the fence, so they don't realize what their, their elected officials are, they're bought and paid for, and they're basically following, marching to a tune of whatever. So that's why the, 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 the governments around the world economically we see it kind of fail all the people, is that they're not working for the people. This is what people are starting to realize, uh, uh, for example, with the uh, referendum in Greece right now, a lot of people don't understand the, the financial implications of them trying to get out of the euros. It was failed from the get-go. But it's empirism. And this is one Anglo-American empire fighting the Eurasian Pacific Empire. Yes. Winner, 
may take all, but loser is the most likely for everybody. So this is why I do the videos I do is to connect the dots so that people, when they look at it, they can say, okay, well, if we were, you know, uh, 10, 15 years from now, when our kids with uh, four arms and three eyes and uh, you know, fall, yeah. <laughs> they're, when they're reading their history books, uh, what they're going to say is that uh, the, the recipe, and the world elites are agreeing with me on this, is where I also follow, one thing I do follow a lot is the politicians. What do they say? What are the policies? The other thing I also follow too is the, the kind of, uh, what you call like the big puppet master types, uh, Henry Kissinger, George Soros, Rockefellers and Rockefellers. Uh, I forget the guys in, in Africa with the diamond trade and all that, uh, Weinstein's or whatever. Okay, yeah. Those people, when you listen to what they say, they, they always, it's always about um, re, uh, resources, control, and power, and the money system. A lot of people don't understand the money system is completely irrelevant because uh, they don't understand what currency is. And the currency in modern form is a form of slavery, but they don't realize that because how you use it. Uh, you grab it, you go and you buy your lawnmower, mm -hmm. just eat your lawnmower, or eat table here, <laughs> and you, you've taken something and you've traded it for something of value. But what they don't understand what the money supply around the world is supposed to be is a medium of exchange. If we go back uh, to the caveman days, people didn't barter and trade. But if we go, say, forward a bit uh, to the tally stick, which was basically what they would do is take a stick and saw it, uh, cut grooves in it, saw it in half, and you gave, the lender would give to the creditor uh, half of the stick, and they would get whatever they would get with it, maybe they'd buy a cow, whatever, and you would either do uh, term trade or labor to, to pay back your debt. And then once you paid back your debt, you would get the other half of the, the creditor would get the half of the stick. And that was actually sound money for seven gold has been sound money for about 6,000 years that, you know, used the barter trade. Problem is, is by the time we got to the 1930s, uh, most countries around the world, under the ball of the banking system, started getting away from federal reserves, meaning countries losing the ability to not only print their own money, but control their own currency. This is what, why the, the, the problem, this is what the problems are here right now. They can't control the currency. They can't devalue the dollar. Therefore, everybody's poor. Uh, but what they also don't understand is what the whole point of the money in your pocket is. The money in your pocket is a bank note, an IOU for, uh, back in the day, you could take your bank note, go into a bank and exchange it for another like, you know, a coin of gold yeah. or silver or whatever. You can't do that anymore. All of uh, Canada, we used to have gold reserves, we don't anymore. Uh, the United States, the Federal Reserve, they used to have gold reserves, they don't do it. But people don't realize that's not what the big picture is. The big picture is countries are losing from central bankers, they're losing their control over their own countries. It's, it's uh, what the United Nations would call the new world order, the one world order, one world army, one world government system, one world education system, one world government. But the problem is, is if you really look at it, it is an extreme form of fascism leads communism life, where every government will be basically under a uh, form bureaucratic Trade Partnership, which now they call the TSA, uh, it does this. Most of the public is not aware of this. Why? Because, again, like I've said, the banking system, the media system particularly, which is the propaganda system, and your politicians are one system. Okay. And a different country. So, uh, but the, the short answer is we are already in World War III, okay. and just we're in the second phase of the, the, the uh, uh, currency war, trade war, and then trade war. Okay. Trade war could happen at any time. Any time. Of it could be 10 years down. another kind of funny thing too because uh, people can take things to extremes because when you don't know what the answer is and all you can do or one of the things I do in my channel is just not so much to scare people I don't like I'm not like the other alternative media where say it's imminent no you exactly. know, you're just uh, warning them I'm just saying these are the dogs and you have to make your own judgments one thing I will say uh, even if war was off the table if, 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 if uh, we lived in a utopia and there was no possibility of war everywhere, everybody on the, 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 the planet would greet each other with a big hug and you were happy to dance every time they saw each other. Yeah. <laughs> kind of like my dog. Well, my dog is really you. But anyway, uh, even, even if that were a thing, there's still things going on like natural disasters, no, earthquakes. Yeah. You know, you, still, you should be prepared. One thing we have to keep, uh, keep in mind in the Great Depression in the 1930s, most
most people that come to the country when they move on through, they were already poor, they had nothing to do with okay, so, uh, a few tycoons uh, lost a bit of money, some of them got off the buildings, okay, fine. But the rest of the people were poor anyway. That's why they called them poor in the first place, because the work was planned for. Uh, the people were still poor, but they, you know, they, they, they took the lady out on the Friday night and went dancing and did this. Yeah. Uh, the happiest music you can find, it, it, you'll never find anything happier than the uh, uh, swing music from the 1920s and 30s. That's so, true. Yeah, if you ever go with swing dance, it's a lot of fun. Just watch everybody else and see it. Yeah. So glad I got to do this interview with him as well. Uh, I know he's just like up the road next town from me, but it was nice to uh, make a video with him and I'm hoping to do more videos with him for sure. Uh, I did this interview with him because I want everybody to know 
uh, his channel and everything, and you guys should check it out. Uh, his link and everything will be right here, or on the top here is a card. So check that out, and uh, like and comment, and also subscribe to him as well. Um, the end of the video actually cut off. I didn't get uh, all the interview, which really sucks because of my stupid camera uh, so thanks to this one thing right here in front of me but uh, I got everything I needed so that's perfect so uh, I hope you enjoyed the interview and I hope you have a good day have a good night and cheers and as always I got balls balls on my necklace